These are probability notes eight, designing simulations. Today we're going to design some simulations using a random digit table. So first it probably helps to know what's a simulation. Well, a simulation is a model of a real life situation where we use probabilities to predict future outcomes. And we're going to look at two examples today. First is a basketball example. In basketball, let's pick a player that makes 60% of their free throws. Let's pretend that this player is attempting 10 baskets in a game and we want to simulate or predict how many shots the player makes. We're going to use the table on page 874, so we're going to use our table handout. Uh, our table looks a little bit like this. You can kind of see here we've got a whole bunch of random numbers. And what we're going to do is we're going to use numbers in the random digit table starting at row 1, which is right here. And we're going to write down the first 10 numbers of that particular row. So in our table here, those numbers are 10480155011. I'm just going to copy those numbers down right here. I'm just recopying the first 10 numbers on that table in order. Now, there are 10 different possible one digit numbers. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. What's 10 doing in there? Get out of here. That's not a one digit number. 1 through 9, it plus a 0 makes 10. Now, if we choose 60% of these numbers, that would be 6 out of 10. 60 coming from the percent of free throws the player makes. We're going to use these six numbers, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. You could use any six numbers. I like to choose numbers in order. These six numbers, the 6 out of 10, the 60%, are going to represent made free throws, or makes. The other four numbers, 6, 7, 8, and 9 in this case, will represent misses. So how many of the 10 numbers you wrote down in part A are between 0 and 5? These are our makes. And when I look at these numbers, it would be 1, 2, 3, nope, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, nine of our numbers are between 0 and 5. This is a simulation of 10 free throws. The number of makes in this simulation is the number you wrote down in part B, which is, wow, 9. Part C, write down the first 10 one-digit numbers in row 2 and determine how many makes will be represented there. We'll pause the video and see what you came up with in just a minute. If we go to row 2, the first 10 numbers on row 2 are 2, 2, 3, 6, 8, 4, 6, 5, 7, 3. You can see those numbers right here in the diagram. And for part D, when it says how many of these 10 numbers you wrote down are between 0 and 5, we'll count them out this time. Uh, we have 1, 2, 3, no, nope, 4, no, 5, no, 6 numbers that were. This represents six made free throws, and what's interesting is that when we did part B, we got nine. In one simulation, we made nine free throws, in the other simulation, we made six. You don't always get the same results for each trial of a simulation. Let's take a look at example two now. This is an example where we're going to talk about children in a family. Let's assume that the birth of a boy or a girl is equally likely, 50% chance for each. We're going to use simulations to estimate the probability of having exactly one girl in a family of five children. To simulate a family of five, chi five kids, let's choose the first five numbers from row three of the random digit table. You see those numbers right here, 24130. I'm going to write those numbers down. Similar to what we did in the last problem, we have a percentage, and 50% of one digit numbers would be five numbers out of 10. We're going to let five of these numbers represent a boy. I'm going to choose the numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. You could choose the even numbers, the odd numbers. You could pick five digits with no rhyme or reason. I like picking numbers in order. I just think it makes it easier. We're going to let the other 50% of the numbers, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, represent a girl. So when I ask how many of these five numbers represent girls, we're going to look for any number that's between 5 and 9. and Hmm, I don't see any here. This would be a family where all the numbers are between 0 and 4, which means this is a family of 5 boys and 0 girls. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to continue. On row 3, we're going to take the next 5 numbers right here, write those numbers down, and determine how many of them represent girls. 
pause the video, we'll see what you come up with. Our next five numbers in row three are the numbers 48360, which you can see down here in our little table. So we wrote those numbers down. Remember, girls are numbers between five and nine. So when you look at this list of numbers, that's a boy, but we do have a girl here. Boy, girl, boy. We do have two girls this time. And again, you can see sometimes you get different results when you do simulations. We're going to continue to go along row three. The next five numbers are 22527. I'm not going to write those numbers down this time, but I am going to keep track of how many numbers are between 5 and 9 in this grouping. And I can see the number 5 and the number 7, that would be 2. I'm going to fill that number in right here. For the next group of 5, we're going to be using the numbers 9, 7, 2, 6, 5. A bunch of numbers between 5 and 9 here. I see 1, 2, 3, 4 numbers in this grouping. So the next 5 would be 4. What I'd like you to do is continue going along row three here. We're going to take this group of five numbers, this group of five, so on and so forth, going across the way, counting how many in each group of five consist of girls. Pause the video, write down what you get for these next set of answers, and work your way through the rest of part D. Based on the numbers in the chart, I came up with three, 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 one, one and one. Altogether, we have done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten trials. And for part E, if you take the results of the ten trials from parts B, C, and D, what percent of these ten trials resulted in the family having exactly one girl? Well, I see that we came up with one girl the last three trials here, here, and here. Other times we got zero, two, or three girls. But three times we got exactly one girl. So we're going to say that three out of ten of these trials, which equals 30 percent, resulted in a family having exactly one girl. Now you're probably wondering, what's actually the probability of having exactly one girl in a family of five kids? The actual probability is closer to 16 percent. And if we had done more trials, we would probably get something closer to 16% compared to the 30% we got. All in all, we're kind of close, but again, increasing the trial should give us more accuracy. And what we've done today is we've created some simulations to model real-life circumstances.